Hey everyone. Uh, good afternoon, I guess. Uh, how are y'all doing? Good. 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 All right. So today I'm going to be talking about my journey into software engineering. Um, it's going to be kind of over the span of a couple of years, what led me to it, and some key takeaways that I have that I hope can help you all. My goal here today is if one person learns something of value, I think it's a success. So my journey kind of into software engineering really stems back to my days in elementary, middle, and high school. I was always kind of math oriented in that I enjoyed the subject and I did pretty well in it. And then going into high school, I took AP computer science and I did well in that. And hence I started doing like a high school internship. And then I ultimately came here at Georgia Tech for my bachelor's and master's in computer science. Obviously like the degree went well, I graduated two years ago and I've been working as a software engineer ever since. Um, I actually recently hit my two year mark last month. And a couple of key lessons that I've learned throughout the way is Number one, networking is probably the most important part of like the whole thing. You know when they say it's not about what you know, it's about who you know? Now that sort of level of like nepotism exists a lot in America, but specifically within the tech industry, it's important to actually have both. So in tech, it's who you know and what you know, because a strong network can maybe help you land an interview, it can maybe help you get into a certain position, but if you actually want to execute there, you actually have to know your things. Like if I give someone a referral, their resume might pass the screen, they may actually be fast-tracked into the final round interview, but if you have no technical aptitude, if you have no ability to do lead code or data structures and algorithms, you are not passing that interview despite how strong my referral was for you. That's straight up. I mean, unless your dad is in the NBA, you're not getting a free pass there, right? Um, and so, that is actually one of the things that I really like about this whole Head Starter program, that if you don't get any sort of value out of the AI projects, out of the specific things that you learn, at least take some value of the network and community that you're able to build here. Go to the IRL events, meet people through Discord, set up coffee chats with them. In fact, like, if you, like, I would actually make it a goal if I was, if I had, like, free time and I was doing this fellowship, I would make it a goal to meet at least, like, one new person every single day within the Discord be like, hey, my name is blank and I have this experience. Do you want to set up like a 15 minute coffee chat? And you know, you may not even see the direct value right then. In fact, like people in this fellowship program are the ones who are seeking jobs. But what you do is you establish a co close friendship. Then eventually after this fellowship, when they land that big tech software engineering job, you're gonna be first on their mind. You're gonna be the one that they wanna give a referral to. Does that make sense, right? Like, you wanna establish that warm connection. You don't wanna just be like, oh, hey, do you remember me? I was in the program with you, and now can you give me a referral? No, you want them to be like, oh, my name is Sajad. Can you give me, a, you remember me? I, you wanna give me a referral? Like, you wanna establish that level of close connection so you can actually go from there. Now, another thing is, alongside of the networking, is, LinkedIn. Um, now, this is probably like the biggest platform everyone thinks about networking, but I feel like a lot of people just kind of get it wrong. People just think that, okay, I connect with you on LinkedIn, boom, we're connections, we're homies for life, or whatever they, they perceive from that. But personally, what I did when I was seeking an internship was every single day, I would connect with 30 to 50 people that I wanted a potential referral from. I would search up software engineering at Google or at a certain company I was seeking. I would connect with them and then add in a small note. Hey, my name is Sajad. I'm a computer science major at Georgia Tech. I have a past internship here. Could we hop on a 15 minute call to talk about internship opportunities at your company? Now, what you do right there, that call, it turns, it turns a cold outreach into a warm outreach because then you get on call with them, establish that connection, and through that phone call, you'd be like, hey, by the way, do you mind referring me for this open position at your company? That's the true power of LinkedIn. It's not just hitting that blue connect button. It's not just uh, liking your friend's post. It's not just typing, commenting for better reach. Like those are all great outwardly things, but internally to establish close, close connections, you actually have to slide into those DMs. Like LinkedIn DMs are safe. So use the power of LinkedIn in that regard. Also, sometimes just even in your close network, maybe it's your 
dad's friend or mom's old boss or so someone like in your close network, you'll be surprised how connected you are. Like this is actually a small world. We might be 8 billion people, but it's a small world. In fact, my first software engineering internship in which I actually got an internship into Amazon, I had one of like my dad's acquaintance family friend. It's, it was like a weird connection, but we had a soft connection. I had his email address. And in fact, like the day before, like my final round interview, I asked, hey, could you put a referral on my behalf? He put a referral, I did my final round interview, and I got an offer, like I, I did the interview on Friday and I got an offer on Monday, which was insane, right? <laughs> so sometimes it's just like your, your, maybe not your close network, but your friends of friends network, or just be open about it, saying that this is what you're seeking. I feel like ever since COVID, everyone's become so introverted for some reason, but just be outwardly, say this is what you're seeking, this is what you want, and even if it doesn't directly lead to a job right then, it might lead to something in the future. Because people, their positions change. Sometimes someone who's just a recruiter could turn into a different position, or people can start their own businesses and remember, hey, you were that ambitious kid that reached out to me. Um, you wanna like hop on a call, we can talk about it. Maybe I wanna hire you into your company. People actually really like young, ambitious people. And the more that you come outwardly and reach out to them, that shows your level of ambition and interest. So they're more likely to hire you, sometimes just on that basis. In fact, I've had a lot of people point out the fact that I am ambitious in terms of my outreach because pretty much when I was telling you, I would reach out to 30 to 50 people every single day. That wasn't 30 to 50 people from different companies. That was from the same company because I just wanted to get someone <laughs> who would refer me to that company. So that, that, it's so much emphasis on that point in order to get there. And the reason that I sort of started off with my like software engineering journey is because if you guys notice in this talk, I kind of talked about one minute my software engineering journey and then like about like five minutes now about networking. That's because your university, it's a launching pad. It'll help you get there, but truly the work in terms of getting from being a student to landing that career position is on you. That's where your networking comes into play. Your university will provide you the opportunities. There'll be career fairs, there'll be tech talks, there'll be, even at Georgia Tech, we have like sometimes days in the lobby which companies would come in to the, like the College of Computing building and pretty much like recruit there all day. That, they'll provide you the platforms, but the onus is on you. In fact, when I mentioned like my Amazon internship, I applied to that company three distinct times. I went at the career fair, I went to the day in the lobby, I then applied online. I was ambitious and I was will, willing and getting ready to do that. In fact, I, I probably had like three different emails or something like that, you know, just uh, sh keep shooting your shots, you know? <laughs> um, so that's really the power of networking and being ambitious. It'll turn out s some way, shape or form for you. My second internship in which I got a software engineering internship at Splunk, I actually did the cold outreach LinkedIn DMs. And that cold outreach turned into warm outreach. And then, in fact, uh, we established a friendship, and now I actually help other people to get referred into. Um, that uh, also brings me to my next point, is be, help, help people out. If you're in an in internship position, if you're in a management position, help people out, give them a referral if they need to. In fact, um, this will also help you out in certain ways that you may not expect. You help someone out, you give them a referral early on when they're trying to become an intern, who knows, maybe one day they become a manager or they become a CEO and they wanna hire you. You never know what life's gonna take you and sometimes when you do favors for people early on, they almost feel like a level of like, they need to reciprocate that towards you. So I guess the main point is be very ambitious and also be very helping. Putting network aside, another thing that will really help you get your foot into the door is obviously your resume. This, I think, is the most, I guess, central piece of the whole puzzle for a lot of people, because especially nowadays, a lot of people aren't even getting calls back from company. You apply, you get ghosted. You apply, you get ghosted. And sometimes you get an email back and that's a rejection email, right? Um, and that all stems from having a proper resume. And in a time like this, when the economy is super tough, you need not just a good resume, but a pretty much a perfect resume. Now, I typically offer people a resume template, and if you follow me on social medias, it's usually like somewhere in the link in my bio. But at a high level, just to kind of give you guys some pointers, what really helped me out, because when I entered in college, I had a terrible, terrible resume. So if you guys have a bad resume, don't worry, 
uh, like all hope's not lost, you can fix it up. But pretty much you want to have a black and white resume, something that's not two columns, it's a one standardized format. You want to include, if you're a US citizen, you want to emphasize that on your resume because that actually does help you out in like the whole hiring process. And make sure to include all your experiences as well as projects and establish your projects as experiences. And when you're describing any of your experiences, use what we call the X, Y, and Z format. Do you guys know what the X, Y, and Z format is? Yeah, what's up? So it's like you tell them what you did, how you measured it, and what the impact was. Exactly. Now, so X is what you did, Y is kind of how you did it, maybe some technologies that you did, Z is the impact. Now, I think the most central part of that is Z. I think a lot of people forget that. They just said, oh, I use Java to create a dashboard, or actually you probably would use JavaScript, but use some technology to do something, but you forget to really emphasize the quantitative impact, whether that was like it reached 2,000 customers or that had 8,000 downloads for a mobile application. If you don't have the impact, no one really cares. And the impact actually served for two purposes. It shows people the quantitative impact, but also psychologically, when you have numbers on your resume, it actually drives a lot of eyeballs to your resume. In fact, I think there were some studies done analyzing the eye movements of like recruiters when they look at resumes. Numbers are a huge point. I mean, just if, even if you have like, oh, I was the leader of a club of 100 plus members, that is impressive. So uh, I hope these are just like a few, few couple points. Once again, like I have my t template in my bio and I probably made a ton of videos on the resume. You guys should, <laughs> should check it out. Um, but yeah, so resume networking, that will help you get in your, into the door in the first place. Now, interviews and all your technical skills, that could be like a whole another like many hours long talk. But I just hope that this gave you a few touch points of guidance. And if you guys do have any questions now, I'd be happy to take them.